my name is Kenard King, and I'm from Bruce Bank, and I'm an Indian descendant. So tell me about your family. First of all, uh, your grandparents, if you can recall about them, and, and what you found out from them as to your, your roots. Well, my mother, great grandfather, and as well as, as well as my father, grandparents, I was told were from India. What I know is more of my mother's grandparents. They came directly from Delhi in India, and they were basically Hindus by background. We are king, but we were told that our in our Hindu surname was Raju, but it was translated then into King as the English version of that. On my mother's side, we used to practice. Well, that is her mother, her father, and those before her used to practice. Hindu, they had a bit of Hindu, so we were acquainted with the cut and some of these things that they do in Hindu. And the case of my father, they are originally from Bila, the, the Adams, and um, from Bila, a, a part of the descendants, and my mother's side, the Lewis, the John, the Thomases, the Deans. Also, and the king as well, and my father said, because we are king. But my grandmother, who is my father's mother, she was an Adams. Then she married to a king who was my father, grandfather, who was a king. So that's how we came into that lineage, as far as I understand. Also, besides the Adams, there is. The, the Haynes and as well as the the called and um, also we were told that some of the defeaters may be related to us as well. And is it that you spend most of your life in Rosebank or you moved here or the family moved here a long time ago? Well, all of my life I spent it in Rosebank. I was born here, but my mother originally was from Calder and my father was from Bilay. But um, to, my, to my father's mother got married to somebody from Rosebank, who then came into Rosebank because, well, predominantly Rosebank was over 80% Indians at that time. So they came and then, daddy came down that side and then got married to mommy, so mommy left call and, and, and come down. So and then I was born in Rosebank, so that's basically most of my life in Rosebank. Well, all of my life you got to see in Rosebank. Okay, before we explore the family connections, you said that at that time it was about 80% Indians. Indians. Now, 2023, at the time of this recording, would you say that it is anywhere close to 80%? No. Um, to be honest, there's less than even 20% of Indians right now in West Bank. And that changed within the last 50 years or so? Yes, within the last 50 years, uh, due to migration, intermarriage, etc. Tell me about what you heard for, about your grandparents and some of the stories and some of the things that they passed on, you know, just by storytelling, mm -hmm. um, the experiences and, and the foods, etc. Our grandparents on both sides, um, besides being Hindu on my mother's side, much wasn't said about my father's side of heritage, except that we knew that they were farmers and that they did, well, they gained their income by farming, and they were also into a bit of tailoring um, along that line, and they were business people. On my mother's side, they were more of a academic side persons, but they were basically house, housewives. And um, in terms of story, what I know is that they came to Rosebank, well, my, my mother came to Rosebank to marriage, my father came to Rosebank because her parents then got married and lived in Rosebank. But but they were basically because of farming and because of um, owning a, of lands and so forth. And then they settled in Rosebank. That's basically what, what I know. And then they 
marriages were causing to, to settle. And then most of our generation, in terms of my father's side, lived in, in Rosebank. So it, it's like an entire family came and settled in, in Rosebank. And then when they got married, they came again as well. So, and also, I should mention that some of the Solins are also mm. related to us as well, and the Harrys as well. Okay, and that's, those are the Harrys that ended up on the on the leeward side of the island? Yes. Right, which which happened to be my connection as well, because right, uh, the Harrys on the side of the island. Right, yeah. Your What about your siblings? Do you have any siblings? Or? Yes, I do have two brothers, but they are overseas and a sister living here as well. Okay, and well, uh, what about your, your parents? I mean, they're now deceased? Yes, both of them are deceased. Okay. But they, um, they, well, my father's, all of my father's siblings are already deceased. In the case of my mother, they are still um, about two brothers and sister still around. Okay, can you tell me the names? There is Oliver John, who lives in England. And Vivian John, who lives in Florida. So those are the Johns? Who's yeah, carrying yeah, the Johns on it? The Johns on it. Because then my grandmother and my mother's side, she was, she was a Lewis. Mm. So um, the owner of Ross Bookstore, uh, Bertram, right? Right. right mm-hmm. Was her uncle. Mm. That, that is mommy's uncle. So it was mommy, mother, brother. So they were originally a Lewis, then. So my grandmother on my mother's side was a Lewis, and then she married to a John. So the Johns in Calder are related. Also, um, Senior Lewis and John Lewis. And Gideon Lewis, Gideon. I believe, who's yes. based in... Yes, And we featured Gideon Lewis before, and also Bertram Lewis right. on, um, during the course yes, of the, yeah, the, the yeah. interviews as well. Yeah, and even Lewis, who owns, um, well, who who is the evaluator... Um, Joseph Lewis. Okay. Right, he's also part of the family. So then they got married. So my grandmother and mother's side got married to John. So, so, so we, they obtained the surname John. Right. Tell me a bit about you growing up. I mean, at that time, as you said, it was pretty much 80% Indians. Mm-hmm. And there must have been some sort of, you know, community sort of relationship when you were growing up. What was that like for you in, in this community? It was good. We were like one family. And um, basically, we, we grew up, as they say, Indian loves rice. <laughs> so, so we grew up eating rice, and then it was, they had what they call the Cheney Bush. Mm. And then during special occasion, you, you would sit, and everybody in the family, well, in the village, they would come along, and they would sit, and they would have the, the rice in the punk in the chili bush, bush with some pumpkin and they mix it up and they eat it right. and, and then sit flat on the ground with that sit, one right, okay, sit okay. flat on the ground and then cocoa tea mm. was favorite um, tea mm-hmm. for us growing up and so we live as one because they were, we were interrelated to, to, to each other so we'd offer bread food I mean, whatever they have you know and, and so there's exchange and there was a together net in that sense and then there was when they had my uh, wedding and soul like that they would dig a trench mm-hmm. and um, a big trench and you put some big um, pots mm-hmm. and cook on it with the firewood and so so we, okay. we grew up in and then we grew up with touch houses and right. what and type houses right but it, they, 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 the two things you mentioned there with the trenches and the eating out of chain bush that's mm-hmm. something that came down from the Indian yes, connections yes. out of India. Yes. Yeah. And was this connected to Hinduism or just part of the general um, culture that came with them? Well, I think the Cheney Bush thing is connected to the Hinduism. Just the very way you sit and... Yeah, the yeah. way you sit and then because even when somebody died mm-hmm. and they would have what they call the turn night and, and the nine night, then they would do that and then they would, they would sprinkle mm-hmm. some rice and they would say, well, they... Right. These preachers arrive. That right. was Hinduism. That was Hinduism. Mm. Okay, but we don't have any of those things. No, happening. we don't have any of, uh, of those things. And, right. then, they, and then, mommy told me that her grandmother, uh, sorry, her grandfather, was trying to teach her the Hindi. Indian language, the Hindi, the Hindi language, but she she didn't want to. Mm. And then she was trying to she was trying to teach her the Hindu dance, but right. she didn't want to. So most of these things were were pretty much lost by the second generation. Yes. 
and by the time you came into the picture yeah. they were long gone yeah they were, they were long gone but then I had a bit of knowledge of it because sometimes when I go to Carla mm. um, my grandfather and my who is my mother's father mm. he used to conduct a lot of these sessions and we, so we still see a bit of that in Carla um, the Cheney Bush and the mm. Hindu practices of it but how would you compare life then to life now? You know, growing up as a, as you say, as one big family, mm-hmm. everybody's getting along, you know. And, and everybody's now senior citizens and, mm-hmm. and life is now different. What would you say are some of the things that you cherish most about those times compared to now? Well, it was definitely the love and togetherness that you, everybody share something, they share dishes or they exchange whatever produce they have. As compared to now, where people seem to look out for their own selves rather than look out for each other and them. I mean, when my father went to Wangta and he come back and my father was a farmer, sometimes he would give, well, um, give, give a fruit, whatever he brought to his neighbor. And and when he used the firewood, sometimes they come and, and say, give me a, a bit of fire. Then he, he would put it on a piece of stick and give it to them, you know. All that, those are something you, yeah, yeah, those are something you cherish and remember those days. But it's it's not so now because technology is now amongst us. Life has changed. People hardly people don't use it anymore, mm-hmm. and it's stove and stuff like that. So and then people used to come well, we used to come and beg for green and salt and and some sometime we, we ask for a little this or a little that. Mm-hmm. And it was exchange back and forth amongst each other. That I cherish a lot, as compared to now where people seem to be and they want doing their own thing. Okay. On a country standpoint now, if there were things that you had the power to change, what would that be in terms of in the whole country itself on a country scale? If I had the power to change some of these things, my other thing would be to bring back the days of togetherness, of community spirit. And I think that's what we lack right now. Um, because I know in the days gone by, people respected elders and respect each other and say good morning, good afternoon, as the case might be. And they were still looking out. So the, the community used to raise a child. And there was that, that somebody could have disciplined me, but it can't now. So if things had to change, we need to bring back those type of things where there's a community togetherness and where you could look out for each other in the community and then he, every child could have still well in those days they had a respect for each other and if you didn't say good morning you same thing rude somebody could have beat you and say go and made a complaint and, and you get licked still <laughs> no I wouldn't say bring back those licks still but that, that togetherness and, and that respect and that community spirit, I believe, is what is needed right now. All right. And before we wrap up, um, let's find out now how much you know about the Indian Heritage Foundation. Are you familiar with the foundation and the work that it's doing? Yes, I was once part of the Indian Heritage Foundation. But I have not known much in terms of it. But I know I sat at a couple of sessions where they're trying to explore, get the background of Indians, the food. And I know they were pushing for Uniforce to be declared Indian Arrival Day and to make it a holiday. And that's something I think we should still pursue and have it as as a day. And I know they were trying to... Well, I know originally they, they had a cocktail, right? And there was part of the cocktail as well where the High Commissioner from India came here as well. So the foundation I know is doing some work along that area and that they're, they're trying to um, well, advance the cause of Indians. But I would also like to say that they promote more knowledge, or they, or they, get, they, they, they try to get more knowledge of to the Indian culture, which we, which we have lost a lot in terms of the dressing, in terms of even having the, the language being taught, and even the practice, because there was, we had a an Indian culture in India where, we, where people used to dress like an Indian and uh, it, it, they would say the multicolored mm-hmm. clothing and so on for the Indians and they love the rice and different way how they do their dishes. 
Now, we, we have lost that because of the, of development in society and the world at large. So I think it's time that some greater knowledge, because a lot of the younger generation do not know much about the Indians, the history and the, the practice. And I think that's something that the Heritage Foundation should try to get. Right. So we should invest more time in in promoting things that make that connection, right. you know, between, you know, the background connection to India. Right. And, I mean, they might require uh, either personnel go to India or uh, Indians, they come to bring about that that knowledge. Because I personally, I, I get some knowledge when I, when I travel to Guyana and, and to Trinidad itself that sometimes I sat with these I sit with these um, Indians and where the culture actually survived yes, most of it because I normally go for the Diwali in Trinidad and I will see some of the mm. culture and then I will then be taught some of the Indian culture and that's where I, I learned that my surname is Raju and King is just the translation of that Raju right right okay any final words before we wrap up anything you'd like to add before we wrap up yes I I think um, we have come a long way in terms of India because I know there was a discrimination against Indians but I cannot say it is as much as it used to be if it still exists it's in a minority and there's more uh, a, a, a balance now in terms of because long ago there were this imbalance where they were looked upon and I think as Indians we have to cherish our culture the fact that even though we were indentured laborers in the beginning, and we try, try to keep intact so the Indians and culture, revive it because we have lost a lot of that, and have something and and we what did you want to cherish that then? Let me thank you very much, Kenard King, for your time um, today speaking to us, and it was a pleasure having this conversation. Thank you, Mary.